All right, so I debated whether or not I'd be showing this on my channel, but this is my 1989 Damon Challenger, 33 foot RV. I've had it a couple years now, just haven't been able to take it out. I believe there's a fuel pump issue slash vaporite or um, aerated fuel the tank. I gotta drop the tank. So we're siphoning it out. We're not siphoning, we're pumping it out into tanks and the car. This, that's a computer power supply that used to have PC equipment here that you know, I just don't feel like talking about. But anyways, if we're reusing it, uh, cheap clicky clack pump. Let's see, we're getting down to the bottom of the tank, hopefully. Not quite sure if the hose is down at the bottom. But anyway, I was up here. I had that thing all connected up to where the generator was. I just tapped into this fuel line here. Now, um, it was sucking a lot of air, so I think I got to replace the line from here all the way to the tank which I bought. Um, so we'll do that. There's like a, a weird T in the fuel line back there that just has a little four inch drop down. I don't know what they were trying to do, if it's like a sediment catch or something, but dumb spot for it. Uh, we'll rip that out. So I was looking at where this comes through here. Uh, I've known this motor mount was like falling apart um, before. But I sprayed her down with some PB blaster. Um, I think we're going to try to take that out and maybe just try to drill a hole through here and run a bolt through it. Um, it's going to suck drilling through that rubber, but we'll drill a hole, put a bolt through it, maybe take some old shock rubber bushings and put them on the other end of the bolt and the nut just so it has something um, I should probably change the filter I think I might just put a, a barb fitting in here and just use regular clear filters you can get those anywhere you can't hardly find these anymore I suppose that's probably metric though maybe I'll just put a filter in I should probably change the oil Otherwise, it runs pretty good. I think I uh, had a problem with this button and I disabled it. Um, it still works on the dash button to start it, which that's where you'd want to do it anyways. Apparently, it looks like I'm missing nuts on that. Yep, the filter's still in there. Um, Hoping I can get this going to haul the Pinto down to No, no Name Nationals. Rent a U-Haul trailer. <laughs> I'm really biting off more than I can chew because I gotta fix the pump. It had it had a really bad trailer hitch, homemade trailer hitch. Uh, don't mind the dog chain here. And it had like a spare tire holder above it which is completely blown out so we're gonna cut that all out by a Kurt brand hitch hopefully you can bolt it in here except for the RV company torched out the flange of the frame rails so I'm gonna have to bolt in some good angle iron or something I believe get a hitch on here so looks like we might be running out of fuel here all right so we're underneath here that's why I had the hose shoved into to pump out the gas because they got the anti-siphon ball on there uh, so you see it kind of goes through the frame there and you can 
can see I've put some magnets on the bottom, thinking that there's a lot of rust and junk in there, but all the fuel I pumped out has been pretty clean. I think I have a little bit of seepage coming out of there. Um, and as you can see, the original straps that went across the bottom here are long gone. No piece of one there yet. And somebody had put this piece of square tube here with, I think, some kind of structural hanger here. It's meant for inside a building. Um, and it got hooked on something once and put a nice dent in the tank. We gotta take that off. That's not doing anything. Um, and I think when we drop it down, we'll cut these out, put some new threaded rod in there and make our own new straps. Fix any seepage with JB Weld. Hit it with a wire wheel. Put some undercoating on it. Maybe truck bed liner. But the fun thing is going to be trying to figure out what's wrong with the pump. Um, I've done a lot of searching around. I've seen a video on YouTube. I, I should probably try to find it again. Talking about, I think it was a Ford Escape fuel pump but it was similar into the design of this one, which isn't available anymore. Um, when the tank is low, and you see how long this one is, my problem happens when I go up an incline or down an incline, and the fuel is lower, like half a tank. He was demonstrating with the water how there's a recirc system or pathway in the pump. And when that part of the plumbing is exposed to air, it's sucking in air and recirculating foamed up gasoline, which supplies aerated gasoline to the engine, which I think sounds like what's going on because my plugs are running super lean and it just you get on the highway and you can't go 45 miles an hour. So, yeah, that's a dog crying. So, let me get a big freaking wrench and try to get this off. All right, so that wasn't so bad. After I got the jam nut loose, it just kind of came off my finger. So that was the uh, big old hooks that they got in there. And there's the square tube. So that's out of the way. Now, I can't remember if I took this down once before. I think I started to. I think I got to take this, this guard off. Um, but I got to find a way to support this thing. I don't know. Probably get a floor jack under here with a two by six or something. That's that's probably not gonna work because it probably still has some gasoline in it and will get off balance and make me mad and probably hurt. So I don't know. Alright, so I'm looking at how to get to these hose clamps. And they're at such an angle that you can't get a screwdriver on them. Because the frame is in the way. You can't get in from this side, as far as I can see. So I think I probably should take off that end of that hose and hope that I can fish that through as I drop it down. So I replaced that bar with a safety strap and I got this 4x4 four four kind of sitting in here. Um, 
I don't know quite sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but I'm just gonna roll with it. Okay, so I got the front bolt out. There seems to be, I hope, a self-drilling screw on each end here. There better not be a nut on there because I can't get to it. But I got the front bolt out and it didn't seem to drop. I got some jack stands here. So, margin of death is a little lower. We're just gonna take the front down, then figure out the back. All right, so I was able to get that tech screw out of there. But the other side, of course, has a bolt and a nut on that guard. But it appears the guard has been hacked up just enough to fold out of the way. <laughs> so the front is down, sitting on the jack stands. So we just got to get this one bolt out here. Um, oops, it's right there. I think, uh, I think I'm going to find another ratchet strap and hold this post up all right well we got it came down with a pretty good thud i got this very medi mediocre strap on there i don't know where all my good straps are um i forgot to take that hose off over there so yeah i'll do that Okay, I'm out of breath. I will not apologize. Anyways, I got the fuel fill hose out. It's getting kind of rotten. The breather hose, I don't know where I threw that, but that ripped off. I think there's a chunk up there yet. So, I think the only thing left to do is push that button and see if everything can come crashing down. So I'm gonna set you back a little further. Enjoy the show. All right, there goes nothing. I do mean nothing. Okay. Oh yeah, we got that other strap. Dang it. Okay. Tighten that back up. Oh my ass over there. Here goes nothing. Boom. Okay, it's a new day. Got my handy death strap hooked up onto the leaf spring same on the other side let's pull her up tight here okay I got the wood under that side kind of want to take that out but We'll just roll with it. Get these jack stands out of here and drop her down. All right. Let's see how bad this is going to turn out. Oh. Look at all that bird shit. Ooh, smell the gas fumes. All right, let's get that. Well, that strap's loose. Get that out of here. Loosen this one up a little more. All right, I'll be back. All right, 
right, so I got the bird shit all sweeped off. <clears throat> Let's pull that fuel pump. You can still see the part number here. <clears throat> so, I'm kind of wondering what this was. There was a hose going to the front of the vehicle and one going to the back. And this one had a hose clamp on it. Didn't have a quick connect fitting. <clears throat> one of them has got to be a return. I assume this one. One of them has to be for generator feed. I'm thinking this one, but we'll see. Let's open it up. All right, hopefully the camera stays there. Crop up on sockets. <clears throat> Ooh. Dog does not like the UPS truck or the mail truck. Okay. So this looks an awful lot like. Escape video, I see. Look exactly like it. Come on now, what's this? There's some dirt in there. Maybe this sock. Oh. Oh. I wonder if that's supposed to be... I wonder if there's supposed to be stuff in there. Feels like there's stuff in there. Well, maybe that's supposed to be that way. baffling in here. A little bit of gunk. Light is on. So yeah, there's some dirt there. But otherwise, the inside don't look so bad. Alright, well I took the brake clean, kind of hosed this thing off, it ran pretty dark um, with brown stuff. I think what I'm going to try is taking off this. This is the part that was failing in that escape video, where if the water level, well he did it in water, not gasoline. <coughs> The water level came below this spot. This would suck air and bubbles would start coming out of here. And it would just, nothing would come out the top. It would just kind of percolate a little bit until that didn't do that anymore. So, I'm going to take that apart and see if there's crud in there. Okay, so I got the two screws out. They were barely finger tight. I just used the socket by itself. Um, so I'm not quite understanding how this works. It's like some kind of check ball there. You can see there's fuel in that line, but it doesn't doesn't come out. When I blow on here on, on this hole, a little bit comes out this side with resistance. 
nothing comes out about that end. But I blow on this end, some will come out of this end. Not sure why that is. Can't quite tell if there's a passageway from the top of this to the hose. No, I don't get it. Well, let's take this off. Okay, uh, that may be our problem. It's pretty filthy inside there. That sock there is definitely plugged, plugged all up. Yeah, it's pretty bad, it's pretty bad. So, I'm sure that don't help, but I betcha it causes that issue that guy demonstrated with that valve. So, I just about burned up my brake clean on that outside sock. Let's hope I got some left. <clears throat> Alright, best I can figure, this is a check ball here. I believe there's another check ball in here. And I believe it's stuck. Um, it's stuck the wrong way. So I can blow from this end through this hose when it comes out here, it comes out this end. But when I blow, okay. So the dog interrupted me, but I was saying I believe that check valve is probably caked full of that rust powder and stuck. So I can't hardly blow out of there. Which is odd that I can blow reversed, which I think it's supposed to block that way. So I can't take this off. It just won't come off. And I think trying to get it off is going to ruin it enough that I can't get it back on. So I'm going to try to do a soak this in vinegar to see if I can get that rust aid out of there. Alright, so this is odd. I hate vinegar. I hate the smell. I hate all of it. But I got the end of my hose here and I can suck vinegar through there. Really not that hard. Blow it back. So, I wonder if there's some kind of thing in there that it'll only let f liquid fluid come through and not air. Anyway, the vinegar is getting close. It don't look like regular vinegar. I've saved it from soaking other metal parts, so it's kind of rusty. All right, so not much room to film down here, but we're underneath the RV with a bucket full of fluid that identifies as non-flammable. It's about ready to thunderstorm. I got the hoses um, piped together so it's in a loop. The fluid is not covering the top by the check valves. So we're gonna try plugging it in. I have the key on. This is gonna be risky.
nothing. Nothing. Why nothing? Key is on. Look at this thing being by my head. Nothing. Put in. Ground cable. I bet it grounds through the tank. Uh, it just keeps getting better and better. Well, let's see if my meter will plug in there. So, pink, black stripe, and black. So that's the two side ones here. Why have we not evolved to have three hands yet? 6.8 volts. Can't be right. That's not good. I'm going to the battery. Okay, well, I get 12 at the battery. Battery charger is kicking in. It's showing that it's kind of low, but yeah, I hope not. I think it's just because the key is on. Well. I don't think a pump can run off of seven volts. I could poke wires in there without causing a short. Well, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know why it wouldn't turn on. I just ran this thing not too long ago. All right, well, just had a good downpour. I quick buttoned it back up, back up. So there's an issue with electrical. I think I had planned on running a whole new heavy gauge wire back here because I think that will have to go away someday for some sort of aftermarket racing pump or something but I got to thinking too the generator over there is plumbed into this and I don't think they're plumbing into that blue thing I think that's just a vent that they must have added because they're using the Ford vent no no that can't be right I don't know. I have to think 
I'll have to follow the hose, but I think they're using the Ford vent or the return for probably the return, probably for the generator. I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I like that idea because say you're running the generator and the truck at the same time, you're sucking more fuel out of that, out of that um, can or plastic bowl or whatever. This thing has a hard enough time the way it is. So... I think I want to remedy that. Seems to be the way to now do that these days is frickin' AN fittings, which will make you go broke. But... I think that's what I want to do. Tap in something on the side. It's pretty carotid. But yeah. I don't know. I'm just gonna shove it under here for now. Okay. So I was reading online about a lot of people having trouble with their S50, no, F53 RVs. Most of them were late 90s. Oh. Battery's going dead. But anyway, they're all having the same kind of low voltage problem, almost exactly. So they're like, check all your wires to inertia switch, blah, blah, blah. So I wasn't quite sure what my inertia switch looked like, but I found this under there. And the button was down, but you see that, you can't see that. That plug, that plug is way in there and you can't freaking pull it out. So I'd unscrew this thing and uh, pulled out. Um, but now that I can't turn my flash on. All right, so we can see a lot of corrosion on them terminals in there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But it's pretty bad. Um, I'm gonna try to measure voltage down there and see what I get. Okay, well, I'm getting 6.9 volts on the center pin. So, that's comparable with what I was getting outside. That's not good. I just beat on it so that it would trip the button. And it's tripped. Button is up. The connection is from the center post to the right post as you're looking at it when it's bolted to the firewall. So now when I push the button, now it makes contact from the center post to the left post. So inertia switch is fine. I gotta make sure I got good voltage on my battery, I guess. All right, well, I tested, <clears throat> tested my power outlet here, I think. Yeah. It should be on the chassis battery because my other batteries are turned off. So I don't know what's going on. Well, I reinstalled it. I double checked before I had installed it that I can turn the voltage on and off with the key. Still 6.9 volts. So I need to find a wiring diagram, figure out where that thing is getting powered from. Because my thought is everybody's burning out these pumps. At least they were in 2017. They get hot. Well, they're going to get hotter if they have to draw more amperage with less voltage. So I think that's part of the problem. Um, I don't think that that was corrosion on them terminals. I think it was dielectric grease. 
All right, well, kind of took the wire wheel on the drill, hit the rust a little bit underneath the gasket for that pump was pretty rusty. So we hit that. Not going too nuts. I don't, I don't think this tank has got so many years left in it, but we got a new fuel. We got a new fuel line run up here for the generator. So that was sucking air before. So they had the generator hooked to this little port here, which is the vent, which is that guy right there. That's where they were sucking the generator fuel from. I'd have to believe that there's probably some air coming through that flexible hose, if anything. So we're not going to use that. I'm going to run, run a little different setup with a little bit of extra ingenuity to kind of solve this rust buildup problem. I wouldn't say it's solving it, but uh, reducing it. All right, well, kind of scraped down the tank with the scraper down there. Didn't go crazy with the wire wheel because it's, this is the top. That's not quite as bad, but down here we got pretty massive pitting. And I know if I hit that with the wire wheel, I'll probably get pinholes. <laughs> so we just scraped it, sprayed it with rust reformer, and I found like all my old spray paint cans that barely worked, and uh, painted it multicolored. <laughs> There's actually colors underneath there that you don't even see. But got the shelf cleaned off, free paint job. And hopefully this lasts for a couple years. I'd be happy with one year. But waiting for some pipe fittings. And then we'll put it back in. And I forgot to mention why I painted it. Um, it has a lot of um, undercoating. And it's like a tar kind of undercoating. So didn't really need to be fully painted but every time you touch it you get the smeared tar stain on your hands and your arms so that barely washes off so I just figure I'd paint over it with anything all right it's time for another sketchy moment with Nate um, still have a little bit of gas in here that we have to get out got my pump up here I'm theorizing this uh, vent outlet, which they used for the generator pickup, um, comes down. Let's see, this tube here, which is this one here, to the top of this can. Now, we're going to try to pump into that to fill this can. My theory is going to come out of this sock. This sock, I don't believe, is an input. To the fuel pump. The fuel pump input is that little check valve hole. You may have seen my little feet that I put in there. Those are spray paint tops. Right or wrong, I think that those rubber feet that were in there were collapsed too far, causing causing um, restriction. So we're going to try that. Anyways, I'm going to plug this on and see if anything builds up too much pressure here. I don't want it to blow up. Not in flames, but by pressure. Right, so right, right now it's sucking air. Put it back on the gas. Bring it back up. Let's see if 
pour them out of different areas. It did come out of that sock first. I kind of like him, this idea. Doesn't seem like it overpressurizes or anything. It's more air coming through. Pump some air. Pump some gas. That's what we're going to do. Turn this off before we blow stuff up. So we're going to have a, a tap probably back here to pump out of there into this pump. I forgot to put the filter in, but the filter would be there. Into here, so that'll give this can completely filtered fuel. I shouldn't ever have to um, pull fuel from the check valve inside, unless maybe if I floor it and it <clears throat> uses up more than that little pump can handle. Doubtful. Um, and then we're going to add another pickup, probably, I don't know, right here, for generator only. So that'll have its own pickup tube. It'll probably go down farther. Like, obviously there's air leaks on the top of this can, so when it's sucking through that hose to fuel the generator, we're missing whatever that is, five or six inches of fuel. Um, maybe I'll go down three inches from the bottom. I don't know. I'm more worried about this working. Okay, so this is what I've got going on for my redneck engineering. So I got the original pump here. I got the tank level. It's just looking at that, full is actually probably like three quarters of a tank full. Oh, but I think this does compress down a little bit. But still, back to the back to the point here. So I picked up these bulkhead fittings, two and two stainless steel three ace pipe. Got them off Amazon. Got a three ace to five sixteenths barb, ninety degree. That'll turn into here. Kind of like have this one set up. Now the bulkhead came with two gaskets. I don't see the point of putting one underneath the lock washer on the outside of the tank. That would just destroy the gasket. So I'm going to save one of each for a spare, I suppose. And I got fuel injection style hose clamps because I hate this kind. They never work. Okay, so this pump installs with this pointing to the rear of the tank. So we can't, we can't mount these here. 
and also my floor comes down further back here so I don't think I can put anything on the back of the tank uh, so it leaves the front or the sides um, I think I had torn where to put it because I also have some damage to the bottom of the tank here where it's dented up and I don't think I'm going to try pounding it down because structural integrity on this tank is not good so don't really want it here because that's where that tank bulge is I suppose I could put the generator one there because I'm going to cut that off shorter um, I do have to cut both of them because they're too long but the probably got ahead of myself but one of them is going to be recirculation with a small carburetor pump, electric pump, that will pump into here, which is the factory vent, which comes to here. So it's going to pump out of here, go through a filter, go in here, fill up this can. And it seems to come out mostly like right here, anywhere, out the sock. <clears throat> that'll provide filtered gas all the time even if the gas level is only this high it'll pump that full instead of that precarious I'll get it up here instead of coming out of or going into this check hole check valve hole so this is the tank vent to put in. So I guess it's gonna go up here. I kind of wanted to leave room in case I have to put like an air motive pump in. Um, but if I'm gonna spend that much money, I might as well throw this whole thing away. And the fuel level gauge. Um, Holly makes a nice. I think it's a LiDAR uh, unit. Just mounts in the top of the tank and measures the fuel with lasers. But that doesn't work with the factory gauge, so you'd have to add a gauge, which... Money, money, money. But hopefully this redneck stuff works instead. So one thing I've noticed, pointer here, Kind of see the impression of the three rubber. Oh, you can see the impression of the three rubber bases from the pump here, and you can see a rusty wear mark here. That's from the back side of the plastic here. So that was bottomed out on the tank. So how? Can gasoline get underneath here into the check valve if that's bottomed out? Hmm. Sounds like an engineering problem, Ford. So I have my spray paint caps plugged in there. Gives me plenty of gap. All right, so we're going to thread these things together. We got uh, gasoline resistant. Let's see if that's focusing. Of course not. But anyways, that is it's yellow. So we'll get that on there. We're just going to put on the... Uh, Ding on that one. I'm gonna put those on the pipes, then we can figure out when, where to cut them off. When I got the holes laid out here, I decided to go all in this area. Like so, inch and a half from the edge of the. Actually, I should test that with. That should be fine. 
pretty much inch and a half from the gasket, which I think the flange is probably going to come out more. Probably should test that. Let's go backwards. Holes are lined up. Okay, that's wrong. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, so we got new spots marked out. Just notice my gasket is going to be a pain in the butt. It's shrinking. That's awesome. So, I have to find a way to glue that down or something. Yay. Okay, so we got the bulkhead fittings on. We're going to trim off that excess tape before we put it in for good. But we measured with the tape. And we're going to cut these down to 13 inches to the top of the gasket. Um, measured to the bottom of this plate that's actually like a reinforcement plate. So I'll give you a quick view of that. So <clears throat> we're going to count that as the gap from the floor of the tank so that it'll be hanging above the tank about like that, sucking up all the garbage. Um, that's for the, that's going to go on this hole here, I believe. And then for the generator. Thirteen ten inches would be about like that. I'd say that's fair. Enough gas to run the truck on. We run out. <clears throat> Alright, I got one hole drilled. Used my Milwaukee fuel. Um, this bit will bite hard. So I had it set to number 10 on the clutch. Um, these new Milwaukee drills have like electronic clutch. It's not mechanical, so it actually shuts the motor off. It's really nice. <clears throat> but it also locks the gears. So when it jams, it can actually take this and turn it and bust off that metal that it's hooked into and then keep drilling but hang on tight. So I added a magnet up here. I already put one inside, but there was a lot of metal shavings shooting out into that hole. So I probably shouldn't put the camera by the magnet too much, but there is a lot of shavings down there I'll have to clean out. Not a lot of them went to the magnet. So let's get the other one drilled. All right, well, I went one step too many on that one, but it should be fine. Good enough. So let's get these in there. This is the short one. Maybe I should clean out the tank first. Okay, so I got bulkheads and down tubes put in. See if I can get you down the hole here. Well, good thing I checked that because the gaskets are all smooshed out. I guess I over torqued them. <clears throat> Alright, so I replaced the gaskets with the other ones. Um, I 
think what you want to do is make sure that the fitting doesn't spin in the hole because it looks like it was the hole is cutting the gasket. So once the fitting started to turn a little bit, I stopped. So let's check it out. Okay, so I got my hose barbs on. <clears throat> one thing I found having this be the longer down tube than this one gives you good access to try and get a pipe wrench on there to hold the end of the tube while you spin these on so you don't screw up that gasket spinning the fitting. Um, so I guess we're getting down to the end here. I'm gonna put this a line on for the filter. I'll go here. That'll probably mount under the frame, hopefully. Um, let's try out our new fuel injection clamps. Okay, so that's about that. Labeled them so my short-term memory, a long-term memory failure. Need some help. So I've been putting this in there hoping I can get some moisture out of the tank. We'll leave that in there overnight. Um, so clean up tools, put stuff away, and I have work to do underneath the RV. Um, the strap mounts, got to cut the old ones off and get new ones ready. Um, I want to make a mount on the bottom of the frame for the new pump. And I'll probably spray some stuff underneath there to keep rust down. Alright, so we're going to try to get this sealed up. There we go. Okay. Fix that. Had this in the RV that apparently decided to blow up. See how that nastiness is. Great. I don't think I opened this before, so apparently that seal gave up. But let's see what we can do. Alright, well this seems to be tacked up enough to hold that gasket in its home. So let's switch to the ultra black to seal it to the tank. See how it goes. Alright, so I put a gob of ultra black on the holes before I put the bolts in. And I'd actually put two in without any on either side to suck it down to compress those springs and to get that gasket seated right away because it was starting to slide. So we'll pull them two out and put a gob on and reinstall them. All right, we're gonna work on replacing these gas tank straps. We tried to bust, bust one loose here. I don't know if you can hear the chicken in the background, but and now the dog. Chicken trying to lay an egg and the dog just being the dog. Not much left to that bolt. Not much left to 
much left to any of it. 1989. That was a long time ago. All right, so we're just gonna drill some new holes. Gotta drill half inch. I'm drilling, I don't know, a little under a quarter. I think we're gonna drill to the inside of where the straps used to be. Mainly can't go forward because you got the spring hanger in the way. So I'm just gonna take my socket here and I'll go off a of center. That's my measurement right there. from working on the Pinto. Sometimes you just got to use your brain. Sometimes, sometimes you just don't got to, sometimes you just, I don't know. these thinking it'd be cheap and easy well not cheap I guess <laughs> spent like $80 on all this crap so let's see what we got here for thread and rod to the ground so I did buy some cheap ratchet straps 
They're like 10 bucks for four from Northern Tool, which is a good deal. But I think with these, I can just thread them up to raise. Well, I'll show you. Um, I had thought of it before, and then I watched a YouTube video. Somebody else doing something similar, so. did it a little different by spinning the whole rod. Um, my rods are going to be stationary and I'm going to spin the nuts oh. and probably cut the rods off to length when I'm done. Now, when uh, when and if you ever have to drop the paint, probably when. You could swap the rods out for longer ones. To drop it. And then put the, the correct length ones back in when you put the reinstall it. This is what I'm gonna do. Short bolt on top with a lock washer. I don't know. I don't, that might have been a bee sting or a hot drill shaving, but I don't think it's a hot drill shaving. That's the wrong hole. Come on, Nate. We got shit to do here. Well, two nuts are the wrong size. Somebody put the wrong nuts in the wrong bin. Well, it's going to shit. Well, it's going to shit. So now I probably can't put these threaded rods on this side yet because we got to put the tank in here. Put the couplers up. Then we gotta go finish putting the pump back on the tank. close together in the middle, but well, I guess it'll be fine. Oh well, huh? Let's go do a tank. We got the tank almost in position, sitting on the tubes and the rods, but we need to protect the bottom of the tank from 
the tubes and all that perforated hole crap because they're kind of sharp so I'm like what can I use this is the mud flap off of the passenger side the other side ripped off already but you can see the tailpipe kind of had a disagreement with the mud flap here so we took that off we're going to cut some strips off here to put underneath that okay we got two strips i carefully marked it out and laid it out with a ruler and straight edge and no i just took the rockwell and zipped off two pieces all right we got it in position i believe maybe i can go forward a little bit but yeah probably um but got a little help from my hoe stuck that under there to pry it up a little bit so i could get my mud flaps positioned under there um but i think we'll start hooking hoses up and wires and then we'll start turning nuts to jack it up All right, so got all this far and plugged my fuel lines on and realized I realized I didn't remember where the clip doohickeys are, so I had to run all the way back to town to buy some, which is probably a good thing anyways. I don't think you should reuse these. But so let's plug these in. Got a filter now and there to plug in. And then, I don't know, these are the hoses for the filter pump. I gotta put these on, and then we'll start jacking up the threaded rods. All right, so I got everything buttoned up on top of the tank. Make sure my one and two are in the right spot and they are i don't think they fit on each other's thing whatever <clears throat> so just got these kind of stuffed in there right now we'll pull them out before we lift to lift the tank uh, but we got all fuel injection clamps on they're all nice and secure so <clears throat> this is my filter draw from the tank and this song is the filter pump into the other pump through the vent so fun stuff i suppose we start jacking this thing up It's getting dark, but I bought these clamps, road former T-bolt hose clamps. We use that instead of instead of what they do. So that should fit on there. Well, I got tagged by this metal wire that's in here. That's sharp. I think I think I'm gonna put the bolt the other way. I can you even see? So yeah, let's see if I can I'm gonna put this end on here. I swapped it around because this end is kind of boogered up. If I can't get it to flex enough to get on there, then I might have to put it back.
Well, that went better than expected. Now for this piece of junk. This isn't even a rubber anymore. I wonder if I could get away with the radiator hose. You know what? That's what I'm gonna do. I think I have some. Well, never mind. Everything I got is 5 eighths. So let's see if this clamp works yet. All right. I did a thing. You probably can't see it. Well, that holds clamps junk. This is why I don't like these. See right here, it's just skipping over all them grooves. Junk. Fortunately, it's probably all I got. Go find something. All right, I found one. I'm sliding it on now. That's on there. Now for this guy. All right, well, let's keep jacking. I've been working off camera. The tank is up and installed. I'll tighten down. We got our filter going. The truck is running. Um, get like 30 psi at the at the rail. But we got a massive fuel leak, and it's coming from my special setup here, right off the top of the Ford pump, and. Probably won't be able to see this, but got my camera up in there. All right. Anyway, I'm gonna plug this in. Oh come on. Okay, so it's pumping. gushing fuel out of that. I probably didn't get that 
hose clamp tight enough. It's not the correct size hose for that anyway. So I'm hoping I can reach up under here without dropping the tank to do that. All right, so I'm gonna try to get my arm up in there to tighten the clamp on that hose. And I'm using the phone camera and the light. Maybe you guys can watch somehow if that works. It's probably not seeing anything. That was right on it too, I think. <laughs> There's a fire going on down the road. And the fire department I used to be on is responding. Everybody appreciates this shot because it's not easy. I'm gonna try plugging in the pump. good so yeah there's the pump it's gonna mount up like right there I'm gonna bracket I bent up it's getting painted and then the fuel filter will just hang like that it seems to be working oh, I don't see any fuel splashing down like it did before So I got my fuel pump mounted here. It's pretty sturdy. Just bent a piece of, what is that, inch and a half by eighth inch bar stock. Put a few holes in it. And bolted it up to the square tube. Painted it with some black truck bed liner. Rust-Oleum, of course. Pretty tough. So I think I'm going to probably strap this down probably to both of those so they don't chafe on, so the hose don't chafe on that. And I don't like this wire connection facing forward right where all the water is going to splash on it. So I should probably rig up some kind of enclosure. I'm just thinking like cut a plastic bottle and strap it around it or something nothing too fancy but then I let it run in the driveway here for a little bit I don't see any real 
dirt in there yet, but I think I'm gonna have to actually drive it. Get some stuff sloshing around. Next step is to cut these cut these uh, threaded rods off. I think I'm gonna run some nuts up to here and cut them off flush with the nuts. So it'll be two nuts. I tried to find acorn nuts at Menards today and they only went up to three A's. So I wanna do something cause the dog likes to crawl under here and I don't need him getting cut up by the threaded rod. So get the saws all out. All right, well, I got some temporary permanent wire done for the pump. Put a hole through here, the grommet, and tapped into the service light here with the Wago nut. Mostly a, a junction to me, but you can see that. So. This light doesn't like to work so much. You gotta hold the button. But what I'm gonna do is just go around, turn off all the lights, and use that switch on the dash to turn this pump on and off for now. So, got it all wired up. We'll get some wire ties and tie it up to this frame up here. Tape up joints. Got the ground wire grounded to the rod. Kind of overkill, but that's what I had. This is actually wire from a trailer wiring kit that I had left over. I'll probably use this wire for a light down here someday, maybe. Or maybe I'll. I don't know. I'd like to run a, I have a lot of wiring to do on this thing, so I'd like to run a, a permanent wire back here for this with a phone switch and have the service light come in down here so I can check on that filter in the dark. But this will be good enough for a road trip to test the thing to see if all my work here is for nothing. It better not be. Alright, so this is after our shakedown run. Everything looks okay down here. I did have to tighten up the hose clamp for the fill. Looks like I should probably redo it again. Uh, apparently I never tightened it. <laughs> um, but looking at the fuel filter, Looks like we have some color in there now. So I even see a floaty. I'd say we're we're getting some stuff done here. I'm probably gonna have to carry a couple of these with me. We should get this all taped up. Uh, I noticed my exhaust was hanging funny into the into the body, so I gotta fix that too. But I would call this a success.